Uh, first, it is an absolute honor for me to be here with you and to be standing on this stage uh, with a hero of mine, a personal hero, Governor Jim Hunt. When we talk about great North Carolinians, when we talk about who we are as a state, he's the person that you think about. He and his wife, Carolyn, have been relentless, tireless leaders. He cares about people. Uh, he first appointed me to the North Carolina State Goals and Policy Board when I was in law school. And I have worked with him ever since. I was his state senator. Now, when you got a constituent like that, <laughs> calling you all the time, giving you ideas about where to go, you know you're going to be successful. And I have treasured our working relationship that exists today. And I am honored and humbled to serve as the governor of this great state and to continue to work with Governor Hunt to make sure we fulfill the promise that North Carolina is all about. The thing I am so excited about is the fact that we have drawn so much talent to want to help move North Carolina ahead, to serve as cabinet secretaries, to serve in the departments who want to serve on boards going forward. And as I've, I've looked at this talent and I've talked to people who have agreed to come and help us, they say, well, what do you want out of this? What, what do you want at the end of the day? And I tell them that what I want is a North Carolina population that is more educated, that is healthier, that has more money in their pockets, and who have the opportunities to live a more purposeful and abundant life. That's what I want. And I tell them in everything they do, keep that vision of where we want North Carolina to be. Now, I'm going to talk with you today about my passion for early childhood education, and thank you for crediting National Edgecombe Counties and Henrietta Zalkind and the work that, that she has done over the years, and Stephanie Fonghole and the rest of the people that I have worked with uh, for years in helping to, to form our early childhood initiative and where we need to go. But I've been talking to business groups across North Carolina. And I've essentially asked them to do three things with their political capital. Now, our business community has significant political capital. When they talk, the people in the General Assembly listen. Policy uh, makers listen. Governor Hunt was a master of getting the business community to care about public education. And I am coming to business groups today to ask them for political capital on doing three things. Number one, repealing House Bill 2. We, we need to... We need to remove that stain on our reputation we have to get discrimination out of our law. We have to make sure that we stop the damage of losing the hundreds of billions of dollars and the thousands of jobs that House Bill 2 has cost us. And I can tell you time and again about how we're losing out on so many opportunities because of that hastily passed law that was not thought through, that was passed and signed in a day. I'm doing everything that I can to fix this problem. People are yearning for bipartisan solutions. 
here we have an, enough Republicans and Democrats together to repeal House Bill 2. We, we just need a vote. We need a vote. I'm asking you, I'm asking the business community to use their political capital to help get us a vote, to help get us a solution that works, that ends the discrimination, and that brings the jobs back to our state. It's tough recruiting around House Bill 2. House Bill 2. I'm telling people to come to our state. We want you to come in spite of House Bill 2. We want you to come and expand and help us fight it. But with some companies and with sporting events, it's very difficult. So I, that's one of the issues. The second issue I'm asking uh, the business community to help me with and to use their political capital is to expand Medicaid. I have that. I have that proposal in my jobs program. If I could tell you that we're going to have an investment of three to four billion dollars in our state. If I would tell you that that investment would create tens of thousands of good paying health care jobs, particularly in our rural areas. If I would tell you that it's going to help in a positive way to affect the insurance premiums of private companies and affect in a positive way healthcare costs because you're reducing the indigent population. If I told you that our tax money that we've already paid to Washington is going to other states and that we can get it to come back here, 95% of this three to four billion dollars would be paid by the tax money that we've already paid and that the other 5% and costs that we can probably get our hospitals to take care of, removing most of the liability from state government. If I told you that, and if I told you that Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey, and John Kasich, governor of Ohio, and our vice president, Mike Pence, when he was governor of Indiana, all thought that it was the fiscally responsible thing for their states to do, you would do it. I'm asking the business community to help use their political capital for us to just simply say one word, yes, we'll take it. It will help us have healthier families. It will help us on this issue that we are talking about today because most of the people it's gonna help are already working. Many of them are working two jobs. They aren't making enough right now to qualify for Medicaid, but if we could take that burden of health care off of them, look at what it could do to help free up money for them quality child care and, and helping kids. So that's the second thing that I've asked them to do. The third thing that I've asked them to do is to make sure that North Carolina prioritizes public education and not just to talk about it, but to go in and do something about it. And what I mean by public education is all the way from early childhood, K through 12, our community colleges, and our great universities, like the one, North Carolina State, where we are right now, Chancellor Woodson. It will do more to put more money in people's pockets. It will do more for our state than anything we can do to create opportunities. Now, when I ask them to do this, I'm going to be talking about priorities because everybody can say you're for something, but we know that it's an investment. We know that it costs. And when you're talking about priorities, you have to make choices. You can't be for everything. You have to make choices. Now, learning was a big part of my background growing up in rural Eastern North Carolina. My mom and dad were the first in their families to go to college. And by God, the two Cooper boys were going to college. We were going to college. My mom read with me every night. My dad used to give me the vocabulary tests in the back of the World Book Encyclopedia growing up. 
They gave me the values that I hold today. They taught me the value of hard work. They, they taught my Sunday school lessons, and I in turn taught the Sunday school lessons of my three daughters. They valued education. My mom was a public school teacher, and I've said many times that I go all over the state and people will come up to me and say, I want to pay you a compliment. I'll think it's about me, and they'll say, your mom was the best teacher I ever had. <laughs> I'm grateful for her and her hard work. I'm grateful for my public school education. I'm grateful for the early childhood education that I got from my parents that many kids don't get unless we help them get it. And I'm grateful for the public education that I got and my three daughters got from this great state. But we've fallen behind with our support for early childhood education. We've fallen behind with helping to make sure we get the very best teachers and principals to lead our schools. We've fallen behind on the support that we need to give our community colleges and our universities. To get North Carolina ready to learn, we have to make choices. We have to set priorities. Now, when I say that, this is going to be one of the battles that we have in the General Assembly. And this is why I'm asking the business community and all of you to use your political path capital. You know what we did, what we need to do. You heard it today. You know where the investments need to be made in child care and pre-K. You know that it's going to require an investment. Now, I'm not standing here here telling you that we need to raise taxes. I don't believe that we do. But what we have to do is to convince the General Assembly that instead of another corporate tax break, we have to invest in education. Instead of cutting taxes for the wealthiest among us, we have to invest in education. And that's where the choice is going to be. Because all of those because all of those are going to be on the table. And we're going to have to make choices. You know, if we've got tax breaks for the middle class, truly people who need it, then I'm in favor of child care tax credits and the earned income tax credit, and other, other changes that will help everyday people. But when we're talking about giveaways to people who are doing pretty well versus investment in education, I know the choice that we have to make. And we need everybody pulling together to convince the General Assembly that this is something we need to do. Early childhood education works. It is a long-term investment in our future. It is preventive care. North Carolina, Governor Hunt gives me credit for Small Star. <laughs> he was the driving force behind Small Star. I was one of his soldiers. Yes, we worked until late into the night to find ways to form this public-private partnership to get people involved. But we know that it was Governor Hunt's leadership and vision that put North Carolina ahead of everyone in the country. This was the state that people came to see when they were formulating their early childhood education programs. This is where you came to find out the innovations that were occurring because we had people at the table talking, innovating, investing wisely in making sure that we did what we need to do. You know that those kids who don't have the books at home, who don't have the attention, are not going to be ready for kindergarten like other kids who, who have the good fortune of, of having what I had. 
I talk to teachers a lot. One of the things that I have done throughout my career as attorney general, as a legislator, and now as governor, and I do tutoring and mentoring at schools, and when I'm there, I ask to talk to teachers and principals. And I hear from them, and, and they can tell you story after story of the kids who just are starting from behind. And we know we've got to get them into these spots, and we know that we've got to get them the help that they need. And for many parents, early childhood, quality early childhood education for their kids is out of reach. So we have to invest. We have to invest in K through 12. We have to invest in teacher pay. 41st in the country is not who we are. We don't need these other states and other school systems who are advertising to our teachers to come for more respect and better pay and have our teachers answer that call. We know that principals can turn around schools, but being 50th in the country in teacher pay, excuse me, in principal pay, is not who we are. We have to change that. We have to say this is a priority. This is a choice. This is an investment that we have to make. I'll never forget uh, meeting with a third grade teacher when I was out campaigning for governor for this office, who came up to me and said, I'm so depressed. It's not just the pay either, but it's the lack of respect. I'm not getting it, nor are my colleagues. They're not getting it from Robert. And I looked at her, and I, it just came right into my mind. I said, my third grade teacher was Miss Batchelor. She hugged me the morning that my grandmother died. She made a difference in my life. And I'm going to tell you, ma'am, that you are making that difference every single day in the lives of these kids that you are teaching. You're going to have state leaders in Raleigh who care about you, who respect you, who understand the incredible job that you do and that we have to get your pay up, but not only that, we have to respect you. And when we all go to Raleigh to argue for this priority, we have to make sure that we do that. We can talk about differentiated pay. Uh, we need to do things in that area. We talk about testing reform. We talk about making sure that these teachers have the support that they need. Uh, when they're pulling money out of their own pocket to buy school supplies, it is wrong. But when we go to talk to these legislators, we have to remember these teachers and these principals. And we also have to understand that our community colleges and our universities are the driver of workforce training and is the driver of innovation and entrepreneurship in our state. When I talk to CEOs about the kind of jobs that I want North Carolina to have, the first question I get is not, what is your corporate tax? The first question I get is, do you have the people who can perform the jobs that I create? Are your people ready for the jobs that we're going to bring. Education is the answer. Education is how we get them the workforce that they need, how we draw the jobs to North Carolina, how we convince the companies who are here to expand, how we make sure that we provide the capital for entrepreneurship and innovation and for those small businesses that are going to bring jobs to areas that need it. That's how we do it. Now, I know that I've had some very public disagreements with leadership in the General Assembly. And I will tell you when there's an issue I believe in, I'm going to fight for it. At the same time, I understand that there are a lot of Republicans who believe in public education and there are Republicans who want to get better paying jobs for everyday working people 
And I don't think we've ever been as politically divided as a state and as a country than we are right now. You see it every single day with the, the rhetoric and uh, the language that's being used back and forth. What people want more than anything are leaders who are willing to put all of that aside, who are willing to roll up their sleeves, who are willing to forget personal insults and the political jabs back and forth and say, okay, we can compartmentalize. We can argue about those things in a very public way. We can continue to have political fights that people are so tired of. But what we have to do is to sit down and find areas where we agree. I'm already doing that with the leadership in the General Assembly, both Republican and Democratic. We're finding consensus on how we're going to recruit better paying jobs in our state. There are a lot of legislative leaders over there who want to raise teacher pay, and there are a number of them who want to invest in early childhood education. The key is where does it rank in the priority, and that's where you come in. I'm going to fight every single day for our state, for our kids, for early childhood education, for our public schools, for our community colleges, for our universities, because I know at the end of the day that's the key to the things that I want. A better educated, healthier North Carolina where people are making more money and they've got the opportunity to have a purposeful and abundant life. That's what I want. You at this Emerging Issues Forum, and thank you for continuing to, to do the work that you do. You're coming up with the policy and the ideas, and you're getting it out to the people who are the policy makers. Please keep working. I will promise you that I will keep working with you. But let's pull together to use every bit of political capital that we can to get North Carolina headed in the direction that we know is for the good of the future of our state. Education is not only in our state constitution, it is in our DNA as North Carolinians. We were the first state in this company, country to open our doors to higher education supported by the public. We have been a leader. We have been a beacon in the South. That foundation is still there. Yes, it's tarnished, but it's still there. And it can be polished up really quickly if we all work together. I look forward to serving as your governor, working with you every single day to move North Carolina forward. Thank you so much for having me here.